Hello there and welcome. I'm Tushar Chandi. Are you new to technical analysis or are you looking for something new to improve your analysis? You've come to the right place. You see all those technical indicators in the blue box below? I've designed every single one of them and a whole lot more. Now, I know technical analysis can be confusing, so I have developed a new indicator called the Chande Trend Meter, which combines many different indicators into a single indicator to make finding trends a whole lot easier. If that sounds interesting to you, let's continue. Let's review that in order to be successful at trading, you need to answer three questions consistently. How strong is the trend? Where's my exit? And what's my trade size? And the most important question is, how strong is the trend? And that's where the Chandi Trend Meter can help you the most. So here are the specific way in which we are going to answer the three questions from the previous slide. First, for the trend strength, we are going to measure it with the Chandi Trend Meter. For the exit, we are going to use a volatility exit. And for trade sizing, we are going to risk between 1 and 4% of available equity, so that even if we have a losing trade, our approximate loss will be equal to the amount we have risked. So this will help you improve your performance over time. A little housekeeping. Please review my disclaimer. Remember that past performance is not necessarily indicative of future results and there's risk of loss in trading. So here's a design overview of the Chandi Trend Meter. I've used five different classes of trend indicators like bands, patterns, oscillators, returns, and channels. And there are six different time intervals from two days out to 100 days. So the big challenge was, which indicators should I combine and how should I combine them? But I've done all the homework and all you have to do is use it. So let me show you how. So this is what the typical trace of the trend meter might look like. The scale is from zero to 100. We've drawn a region between 80 and 20 with solid lines. That's our no trade zone. Very strong uptrends will produce values above 90 and very strong downtrends will produce values below 10. The opposite will never occur. So now we're ready to use the trend meter and let me show you how. So this is a daily chart of Tesla starting in about August of 2020 and ending in about June of 2022. And if you look at this chart, we see that there was a strong uptrend here in late 2020 and then another surge here uh, in October of 2021. So certainly in these two areas, we should see high values of the trend meter. And then there was a bit of a sell off here, a sell off here and a consolidation there. So we should see middling to low values in this areas. So let's see what happened. This is the Tesla chart with the Chandi trend meter in the upper panel. Just to check again, the scale is from zero to 100. We have solid lines at 80 and 20. So this is our no trade zone. We have dashed lines at 90 and 10. And if you look at this region in late 2020, when Tesla was added to the S&P 500 index, the trend meter was above 90 and sort of stayed there for most of the uptrend and was even close to 100 for some portions of the time. And then during this surge again in late 21, we had the trend meter above 90 and then flat near 100. So whether we look at a chart in the future or in the past during strong uptrends, we should expect values above 90. Now, briefly, you saw that the values fell below 20 here, which means that it was weak, but not super weak. And then because of noise in the markets, you could get above 80 for short periods and reverse. So uh, there's always a risk of reversal in the trend meter because we are looking back for a fixed time interval and our multiple tools give us some idea about persistence, but it could reverse from a high level or from a low level. So we should always plan our trades accordingly. So we've zoomed in on the Tesla chart in the late 2020 area, and we've added one more technical indicator. The upper panel is the Chandi trend meter, and the new technical indicator is a trailing stop. We're calling it the volatility exit. 
So in terms of wherever you choose to enter this trade, we have met the three conditions that we've specified. Do we, is the trend strong? Yes, the trend meter is above 90. Do we know where to get out? Yes, we have the trailing stop. And then once we know the risk, we can calculate the position size. So this is the basic template that I'd urge you to use again and again, where you have quantified the trend strength, you have a volatility exit or a trailing stop, and you know the risk profile so you can calculate the trade size correctly. This is a weekly chart of Amazon to show you that the setup here is the same as the Tesla setup on the daily chart. The upper panel is a trend meter, it's above 90. We have a trading stop under prices. So we can answer the three questions. Does it have a strong trend? Yes. Do we know where a stop is? Yes. Can we size a position? Yes. And then I want to show you that there's always a risk of a false breakout where the market gets you in and then it reverses and takes you out. So that's why trade sizing is important. So this is a good prototype again for you to consider using in the future. I just want to take a moment to reinforce how to calculate trade size. If your entry price is X and your exit price is Y and the risk is Z, then the quantity is merely Z divided by X minus Y. And if you use this formula over time, it'll give you a good handle on overall risk management and volatility control. So it's another good idea for you to use. So the big challenge now is we know how to use the material but how do we find the trading opportunities? So we're talking of tomorrow, you know, next month, next year, two years from now. And the way to find trading opportunities is to use a scanning software such as Metastock and then use the scanning algorithms that you can find in my Tushar Chande's complete toolkit. So let me show you how. So this is what the Metastock scanning console looks like. In this panel, you can select what you want to scan with and in this panel, you can select the exchanges or groups of stocks or instruments you want to scan. I've chosen all the stocks in the S&P 400, the S&P 500, and the S&P 600. So I have approximately 1,500 stocks, and I want to scan them with the trend meter and rank them from the highest to lowest by trend meter. So let's see what my results look like. So this is what the scan summary looks like. I've just shown you the first few lines to make it easier to read. I ran this on June the 6th. The scan was ranked by CTM or scanned by CTM. I ranked them in descending order by the Chandi trend meter. And the first two stocks were Bank First and Ranger Oil. So what should we expect? We should expect an uptrend with the trend meter over 90. So let's see what we see. So this is a chart of Bank First, the first stock on the list. And if you look at the right hand side, we do have an uptrend. The trend meter is over 90 and we have a trailing stop. So we can answer the three questions. Is there a strong trend? Do you know where your stop is? Can you calculate the position size? And we know how to proceed if we want to take this trade. And this is a chart of Ranger Oil. The upper panel of the trend meter, which is at 100. We know we have a uptrend. We have a trailing stop. And the dashed line or the dotted line is a 100 bar channel. So you see that we have made a series of new 100 bar highs. So we have an uptrend. The trend meter is above 90 and we have a trailing stop. So we can answer again the trade sizing question and take this trade with good risk control if we choose. Uh, just to reinforce the mechanics, uh, I have summarized the commentary of the long term system. The entry would have occurred on this bar. So on the previous bar, we knew the entry price and the exit price. So we could calculate our position size as I've been suggesting all along. So for example, if you use the Ranger Oil data, the entry price was a tick above the 100 day high at 42.67. The trading stop was at 29.3, so for a difference of 13.37. So for a $10,000 account with 4% risk, our risk would have been $400. So that converts to a share count of 29.9, which I could either round up to 30 or round down to 29 for approximately the same level of risk. So again, we're just reinforcing the essential elements of the process. Do we have a strong trend? Do we have a trailing stop? And do we know how to calculate the position size correctly? Now, I've suggested that you can use the trend meter to find trends now and in the future. 
based on any exchange, any instrument, any time interval, and any type of market condition. So let me give you a few examples from Germany, India, and currencies to just confirm that the trend meter works the same way across the board, which is what makes it so powerful. So this is a scan of the DAX 40 index from Germany, and the top ranked stock on this particular day was Linda. So let's see what the chart looks like. So this is Linda, the top ranked stock from the previous scan of the DAX index. As expected, we have an uptrend because we are making new 100 bar highs. The trend meter is above 90, so the internals are good. And we have a trailing stop. So we have the correct setup uh, based on all the things we've talked about so far. So we've changed continents now and done a scan for stocks in India. The top ranked stock was Mahindra and Mahindra with a CTM value more than 95. So we should expect a strong uptrend. And let's see what the chart looks like. So this is Mahindra and Mahindra. As expected, we have an uptrend. The trend meter is above 95 and we have a trailing stop. So the setup is exactly like all the trades I've shown you so far. This is an example of a chart with strong downtrends. This is the daily chart of Shri Cement. As you can see that when we have the downtrend here, the trend meter was below 20, even below 10. Again, a downtrend here and trend meter was below 20, even below 10. So this is just a reminder that we can use the trend meter to find short side trades and the purple dots here are the complement of the red dots and these are for trailing stops for a short side trade. So a reminder again that the trend meter is very consistent. Strong uptrends value above 90. Strong downtrends values below 10. And now the last slide in the sequence we have the dollar yen cross rate. So we are plotting yen to the dollar. As the dollar strengthened due to rising rates in the US, the trend meter was above 90 and we have a trailing stop. So a completely different instrument, a cross rate or a currency cross rate. And the chart looks exactly the same like all the charts I've shown you so far. So that shows you the power and consistency of using the trend meter to find trends, not only now, but also in the future on any exchange, any time frame, and then any market condition and any type of instrument. So I hope you will consider getting to Chandi's complete toolkit so you can use the trend meter to find trading opportunities in the future by using the Metastock scan engine. There are lots of other tools also in this package. Overall, it's very easy to use. It's simple with a short learning curve. It's powerful with lots of features that are bundled in. It's very clear, there's no ambiguity about where to get in or where to get out. You can use it on any time frame and on any market or exchange. And you can get it by going to metastock.com slash chande A. Well, thank you so very much for listening to the entire presentation. And I hope you'll find some ideas that are useful and helpful for you in your future trading. Please take a moment to visit my blog at chandeindicators.substack.com. Thank you again and have a great day.